Greetings, D&D players, enthusiasts, and observers alike, and welcome back to Chronicles of Kriath. My name is Emma, and I will be your DM today and every day that this wonderful campaign exists. Last time, our players continued to make their way through the Triple M Monastery, taking out undead monks as they went. However, they did manage to find a couple monks that were still alive and very much not dead. And... They gave our adventurers some insight into what had caused their companions to come back from the dead. Chatwin broke their door going in, but coming back out she did manage to put a bench over it so that these not dead monks would stay safe. And they now head out to explore the second floor of the monastery and put an end to the undead madness once and for all. Oh, yeah, and Rubo got a cool whistle. Oh, no. Hell, yeah. That's going to go real well for us later on. You know. Who knows? (laughs) With that. The best is yeast to come. Okay. (laughs) Enough with the fucking (laughs) bread puns, Nathan. (laughs) (laughs) I'm done. (laughs) As as Gia... clutches her croissant pillow that is responsible for all the bread puns. It's a baguette, Emma. Well, (laughs) I'm sorry (laughs) that it looks like a croissant from my end. Anyway. (laughs) Chibata, get into it. (laughs) Can we please stop the bread puns? (laughs) Alright, I'll stop, I'll stop. Thank you for being on my team, Jeremy. (laughs) You guys climb the stone stairs that lead up to the second floor of the monastery, and you come across what appears to be, as you kind of step up, rows and rows of bookshelves, various leather-bound volumes lining each one. There is a very fully stocked library here at your disposal. You are welcome, Chatwin. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> a single tear down the cheek I'm uh, I'm descending, I'm ravenous I, I'm going to immediately begin to make my way systematically through the room scanning each bookshelf each uh, spine of the book just uh, searching Damien is going to follow closely behind her and ensure that he is looking out for zombies that are just going to jump out and bite her face off while she's graygasming over fucking books. Alrighty, go ahead and make me a perception check, good sir. Oh my goodness, why do I have to be the babysitter? Make an investigation for certain types of books. Sure, cool. That's only going to be 7 plus 6 is 13. Um, that's going to be 18 total. I am looking for any books related to both necromancy in general as a form of magic and anything to do with genies, jinn, afriti, anything of the type like that. And I'll also kind of, is there anything that uh, you want me to keep an eye out for? And the voice in the back of your head chimes in and... Essentially goes, well, I mean, I don't know how much you will find about what I am, but um, keep an eye out for um, books on possession Mm. or um, multiple consciousnesses, anything that sounds very similar to our situation. I don't know what the fuck that Uh, asshole did but we need to find a way to reverse it right exactly um once we get to a proper library with actual attendance we can probably find something more specific but while we're here couldn't hurt to check exactly uh so yeah anything possession multiple consciousness necromancy and genie jinn afriti um anything from any of those subjects with my 18 investigations is what i'm looking for all right you start scanning bookshelves and uh you definitely don't find anything on gin or genies. Damn. You do, however, see a book on uh, types of, uh, as it calls it, like, unholy possession. Or you find a couple books on necromancy. And 
as they are labeled the magic of life and death. Ugh. As you reach for the second volume, a oh fucking now rings out in your ear. A zombie appears directly next to you. Oh god, it gets a su- it gets a surprise round, doesn't it? Oh fuck. Yes, it does. Ah! He's gonna take a quick what? swing at you. My ten passive perception didn't <laughs> pick up anything. But Damien, as that zombie appears next to her, you do catch sight of another one coming around another bookshelf further down, like 10, 15 feet down the hallway, and kind of zeroing in on you guys. Uh, that is a 19 to hit. Fuck, even with shield, nah. Um, yeah, 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 that hits. Uh, that is going to be... Seven points of bludgeoning damage as it slams you into a bookshelf and multiple tomes fall down on your head. Now everyone may roll initiative. Since that was uh, a surprise on its part, I can't take a reaction, can I? I think so. I think you can still take a reaction, you just can't take an action or a bon- like bonus action against it. Yeah, I would say that surprise round doesn't necessarily cancel out thing reaction abilities like hellish rebuke or whatever. So you can okay. still use that if if that's what you're talking about. Then yeah, I'm going to hellish rebuke him. Damien's also going to yell out, "All right, income and get behind me." Anybody get above a 20? Above a 15. 18. Above a 10? 14. I have an 18, but I have a plus 0. Then they'll do yeah, I got a nine. I do rely on that advantage. <laughs> Alrighty. Then we will start at the top of the round with Chatwin. As you have been slammed against a bookshelf by a zombie. Oh, sorry, I didn't ask. What was the damage on the Hellish Rebuke? Um, It needs to make a deck save first. Oh, deck save first? Okay. Yeah, sorry. That's a natural 19. Ah, goddamn. Minus two, so that would be a 17. Yeah, so they, they're still going to save even with their minus. Um, that's fine. They take half damage. I rolled for 17 points of fire damage. I rolled really well on my 2d10. Um, but it halved uh, up to you whether that's the higher, the, whether it's rounding up or down. You have a zombie directly in front of you that has slammed you against the the bookshelf. And you can hear another one coming, but you haven't seen it. Since this motherfucker's right in front of me, I will... That's an action to cast. Uh, and Damien's right beside me, right? Yes. How closely were you following her, Damien? I was right beside her. So yes, Damien is right there. And how far away did you say the other one... The other one was... Is it in my line of sight, the second one? No, it's blocked by bookshelves, but you can hear it about 10 or 15 feet away. Damien has a clear line of sight because he's standing in like the, like how libraries are. There's like the long corridor and then there's the bookshelves that split off to the side. Oh, okay. So this, okay. Great. So you're in like a side alley bookshelf. Mm-hmm. He's mm-hmm. in like yeah. the main hallway of books. Makes sense. I suppose then I will, oh God, I'm really not good with this up close shit i will go ahead and what's that spell i'm thinking of green flame blade that's what it's called Uh, i couldn't find it for some reason oh wait no that's gonna take up my action though whatever i'm just gonna uh, hit it with um my shiv i will fully remove this very uh, crude looking shiv from somewhere on my person and stab it try to stab it under the chin because <laughs> it's in my personal bubble and i don't like that well that <sighs> that's a nat one <laughs> Oof, the. you try and make a swing for this zombie's head and find that it is still much hotter than you thought It would be, especially with all the fire and stuff. You find that the heat throws you off a little bit, and the shiv manages to slip from your grasp before you're able to plant it in the the head of the zombie. Uh, Almost. (laughs) 
Okay, okay. Ah! <laughs> uh, so, uh, Shiv did not work. I will bonus action. <laughs> Ifriti's aura um, just erupts in light and my hair <laughs> goes back. The eyes alight. But yeah, I am bright and shiny and wreathed in heat at the moment. And I think that's all I can uh, do. Yeah, I'm just going to stay where I am, I suppose. Alrighty. Then we move forward to Damien. Alright. Um, I see that there's a creature tango in with her. And then I see that there's more creatures coming. Are they... Do they have to go through me to get to her? Or are they coming towards her? They would have to go through you to get to her. There's only one more, it seems. Coming from that direction. Well, then I'm going to do the tried and true and grab this little zombie by the face and sling him around with his buddy. <laughs> and put and put the big fat man, between, the big bulky man between the zombies and the little people. Go ahead and make me an athletics. I'm assuming that's what you're going to use for grapple. Indeed it is. That's a 13 plus 4. 17. You... Grab this thing, again, like a ragdoll, though a slightly charred ragdoll. You sort of rip it away from Chatwin, sort of place it in between you and the other zombie that is slowly ambling towards you from between the bookshelves. I got a question. Are the bookshelves only like five foot wide walking space, or do you think two people could fit side by side? Two people can most definitely not fit side by side. They're pretty narrow narrow spaces it seemed like they were trying to cram as many books into this room as possible excellent all right anything else you would like to do nope that's all i can do but um if that's all then rubo it is your turn perfect rubo is going to run back down the stairs no i'm just kidding bye rubo <laughs> will take a step up next to damien and Make an attack on this thing. Roll to hit. That is a 14. That hits. Can I, could I have moved so that I'm getting like flanking with this thing? I would say you would have to make an acrobatics check because there are ways that you as a rogue, since you have moved through a lot of narrow spaces before, could do it. But... Okay. It re would require a lot of nimble movement to try and, like, um, squeeze through the right places without getting hit by this zombie. Okay. Can I do that? Yes, you may. Roll in acrobatics, please. Oh, that is a natural 20. Nice. Oh, I actually have disadvantage because <laughs> of my heavy armor. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, it's a 15 plus 2. Uh, okay. 17. You managed to... As Damien's kind of holding this zombie out in front of him, you manage to, after watching for a moment, like exactly how this zombie is moving, trying to like struggle against Damien's grip, you see a perfect opportune moment where you can just zoops, like slip through and you do so. I'll, I'll kind of scoot up on the other side, so I'm kind of like on the opposite side of chap, and then I will make an attack. Oh, I did. Do you want me to roll it again? Oh, did you already roll the hit? Four, I Sorry. rolled 14 to hit first. Yes. Go ahead and roll damage. Pretty good. Uh, nine and uh, that's thirteen plus two is fifteen points of damage. And this is on the one that Damien's holding, or the one that yes, okay, the one Damien's holding. Floor is yours, good sir. Sweet. I will just kind of slip by, and I think like as I'm stepping by, I'll just quickly like be like, uh, Chatwin, like this, whoosh, and just stab this thing in the face. Uh, as she missed with her shiv. And just stab it in the face, and then I will draw my second dagger from my waist real quickly and throw an offhand attack at the other one because now I'm adjacent to it. Also, roll to hit for your offhand attack as the previous zombie just not as good, but bubbles. 13? 13 still hits. Sweet. This is just a d4 of damage. Two. You were you were so eager to show off killing that other one that. Your offhand doesn't get nearly as good a position, but you do get a nice slash across the chest. 
on this zombie. Are you gonna move back behind me? Um, I can't move without taking an attack of opportunity. Did he use all 30 feet of movement? I did, but I used my bonus action, so I can't disengage. Ah, I see. So I'd have to take an attack of opportunity from this guy, so I'm gonna stay. Uh, Felthu. Oh, I thought I needed to go to. first. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do something real simple. If I can see, can I see this zombie? Yes, you can. Then I will cast Toad of the Dead. It must make a wisdom saving throw or take a d12 because it has just taken damage. That is a... It's wisdom, correct? Uh, yes. Let me just double check. Yeah, it's wisdom. Clark's spell. That is a 15. Ah, then it passes. And that is my turn. You guys hear that ethereal ding, but the zombie does not react this time. And speaking of, it is the zombie's turn and he is going to... Attempt to rush up to you, Rubo. That is a 19 to hit. 19 does hit, yeah. Seeing you take out its other friend, it runs up and sort of slams into you for three points of bludgeoning damage as it kind of knocks you back ever so slightly. Oh, oh, miss that one up. I should stay behind you. (laughs) And we go back to the top of the round. Chatwin. Cool. Um... So uh, I will, because so, the one in front of me, um, uh, Rubo took out. So I'm gonna go ahead and swing around the bookshelf. We hadn't this second one. It's already taken damage, right? Yes, not much, but a little. Okay. You know, what? I'm just gonna go ahead and yeah, I'm gonna hit it with another. Uh, Chromatic orb. Yeah, I don't because I don't want to do a cone with burning hands. I don't want to damage the books. <laughs> uh, and Rubo, I guess. Um Yeah, I have my aura don't active. Don't forget about me. Yeah, I guess. I have my aura active, so I'll go ahead and do um fire just so I can get that extra bit. So I've plus six to hit. So let's see. Don't do me dirty this time. Sparkly pink die. Okay, okay, okay. Um, that is going to be uh, 17 hits. 17 hits. Tight. That's going to be 3d8 of fire damage plus my, what is it? My, uh, that it, it's my charisma modifier. So 3d8 plus four is what I'm going to get. So where my d8 at? Okay. 15 plus, so that's actually going to be 19 points of fire damage, wow. Shit, that's a lot of damage. Shit. You said 19? Yeah. I forgot I had my aura up still, so yeah, that's an extra bit there. Yeah, so you kind of, like, duck around the bookshelf, kind of squeezing past Damien a little bit. Uh... Reach out and around, and your ball of chromatic fire uh, kind of streaks down the the hallway of books and engulfs this zombie until, once again, it is nothing but charcoal. Oh, shit. Did that take it down? Uh, no, not quite. It is still okay. standing, but barely. As okay. You see it kind of, like... It it is burned to a crisp, but it is still standing. Barely up, you said? Yes. Okay. How much movement did I just use to get... You would have to use 10 feet of movement to go around Damien and come back out into the... Okay, so I still have enough movement to actually get to the zombie, right? I believe so. Okay, cool. I'm going to, after I see that that orb doesn't take it down, I just kind of go... Ugh, and I'm going to sprint towards it, and as I reach it, I immediately just hands on the shoulders. With since my aura is active, um, with the if the creature touches me, it automatically takes damage equal to my charisma modifier, which is another four points of fire damage. Okay, so I just poof, hopefully that takes it down. If not, then yikes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm I'm just imagining you um like rushing up to this thing, kind of frustrated that it's still standing, 
grabbing the shoulders, about to, like, slam it into a bookshelf, and then you watch it just kind of, you see this last burst of heat kind of, like, radiate off your hands and onto the skin of this thing, and then you just watch it crumble in your hands, and there is now a pile of ash at your feet. The hair is, like, floating around me, because my aura is still active. I'll look back at Rubo. Ta-da, I suppose. I'm not good at the uh, melee sort of, uh, I, uh, whatever. I'm going to go back and pick up my shiv. <laughs> Just kind of uh, stash it back in my clothes somewhere. Um, who knows? I don't. Um, <laughs> and Where does she keep that thing? That's the, that's the point of the shiv. You're not supposed to know where I keep it. And I'm going to pick up the books I had picked out. I want to do my best to keep the one on the topic of possession hidden and covert as I try to put them in my bag. The others I don't care if anyone sees, but the one covering possession, I I want to avoid having people see it. Rubo does not care. (laughs) Okay. Then I'll say sleight of hand against everyone's passives, because I don't think anyone's looking too hard at your books. Ugh, I'm proficient in stealth, not sleight of hand. Okay, what's a good, what's a dice that's been nice to me? What's you could have a book that says how to kill Rubo. <laughs> Let's, oh god, please, I only, I'm not good at sleight of hand. My dex is okay. Ooh! <laughs> that's a 19 plus one is a dirty 20. <laughs> Nice. I don't think anyone's passive is above that. Rainbow dice, you always do me right. There are no more zombies from what you guys can see. And similar pattern to previous room. You come up the stairs and there's a door on the left side. You see a door across the way on the far side of the library. And then there's a set of double doors that lead to what you assume are the is the bedroom from what the other monks told you. That was rude. I kicked the zombie that hit me. Okay. I'm not super at 100% right now. So I'm going to... If Rubo, if you or Damien wants to lead the way into the bedroom, I would not be opposed. Yeah, I'll, I'll lead the way. I'm just going to go over and just open the door. You open it to a room filled with plain, simple beds. You see a few possessions scattered around. What immediately catches your eye is this large, hulking figure standing in the middle of of the room, surrounded by snakes. It is very similarly wearing, like, monk's garb. You watch as a, uh, a figure wearing, like, a rather worn brown traveler's cloak hands it a morning star, kind of glances over you guys and is like, it's about time you showed up. Or rather, someone showed up to stop me. Hands at the morning star. Have fun. And you hear him give a little bit of a hiss. And you watch as three black snakes with small spots of red dotting the scales slither out from under the beds and start to surround where he stands with this big hulking figure. As soon as you look down to the snakes and look back up, you see the fading outlines of like a blue portal closing behind him as he disappears. About to be you on dead. <laughs> are we re-rolling initiative? Uh, yes, you are. Who rolled above a 20? 21. Also okay. 21. <gasps> you definitely have uh, higher decks than me. 19 plus 2. I have a plus 2, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I guess, right? Yeah, I have plus 1. Yeah. Alrighty. Uh, above a 15? I got a 19. Nice. Damn, pop off, guys. <laughs> it's the boss fight. You gotta, gotta give it all. Yeah. <laughs> Mini boss? Are you kidding me? Nah. And then, Damien, what'd you roll? I rolled a 14. Then we will start at the top of the round with Rubo. 
I am going to move in towards... Okay, then I'm just going to move up at that snake and make an attack. Alrighty. That is a 16 to hit. That hits. Against the snake. Sweet. Um, it is not great because it's not sneak attack. That is a five points of damage. Uh, the snake hisses as you bring your dagger down on it, but it's still kicking. Um, I guess I'll offhand attack to him as well. Okay. That is a 14 to hit. That hits. Three points of damage. Bring the dagger down again, and you hear the snake, snake like hiss in pain, but it's still kicking. Okay, that's the end of my turn. Alrighty, then we go to Miss Chatwin. Okay, I'm going to run up beside Rubo. My Ifriti's aura, it, it should still be up for the first few rounds of this, because we went from the library straight back into this doorway, right? That's correct, yes. Okay, so yes, I still have that guy up. I am going to, at second level, cast Burning Hands into this room, and with that 15-foot cone, would I be able to hit, because I have the big guy right in front of me, dead to rights, but the two, and as well as one of the snakes that's right in front of me, the two others, they look to be within range of that cone right yes i believe so so yeah i'm going to do that at uh second level so i need every single one of them to make me a deck saving throw um and that is since that aura is still active i will add on that plus four of my modifier a nine and a 13 total nine and 13 yes dc is 14 so they both fail awesome that's gonna be 22 points of fire damage total to both. You just whoosh, decimate the snake and the ogre is looking very dazed but still left standing. Okay, great. Uh, I will cast that and then um, I'll take a step kind of to the sides out of the doorway so people can run in um, past me. Because I don't want mm-hmm. to quite back out of the room. But after I cast that, I will just kind of move to the side to allow that space. Uh, thought you. Yep. We move uh, to you. Going to run up towards the door. Am I able to uh, be five feet away from the door? Or is there something like a book sh- uh, bookcase? The bookcase would start like here. Okay. So cool. you have move- room to move five feet away from the door, yeah. Yep. So I'm going to do that so I don't block uh, traffic. Uh, and then I'm going to cast... Where was it? Uh, Guiding Bolt at second level. Uh, That is a 22. 22 hits. Uh, I'm sorry, to make sure I'm I'm hitting the big guy. Yep, 22 hits. Yep, 5d6 radiant because it is upcasted. 10 plus 1 is 11 radiant plus this thing. um, The next attack roll made against it has advantage, and I'm going to then switch into, after throwing a luminous javelin at this thing, as it um, presumably now glows, I'm going to bonus action for starry form of the archer as I draw the once again luminous starry bow and as I take this form I get to immediately uh, make a ranged spell attack against it as I use the uh, the, uh, the bow. So I'm going to do right. that with advantage. That is a 16 to hit. That hits. Wonderful. That is then a d8 plus my wisdom which is plus three. Yes, five more radiant damage. And I also now glow with 10 feet of bright light and then 10 feet of dim going out further. Oh my gosh, that's fun. I, I'm glowing with like a bunch of light too. I love how we are just constantly glowing undead motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think mine is 30 feet bright light, 30 feet dim light. <laughs> We're just so shiny, Thalthu. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, mine is 10 foot bright, then another 10 foot of uh, dim. It lasts for 10 minutes or dismissal. Uh, but that'll be my turn as I shoot this thing with things. Alrighty. And yeah, you watch as your glowing javelin followed by your glowing starry arrow find their mark in both his stomach and his shoulder. It sort of howls out in pain and its attention kind of turns to you. As everyone else you would see, uh, Thelthu shift from his normal form to as he pulls the starry bow back, the stars on his arms and legs begin to glow and sort of take over his form. 
shift him into a more similar shape to the archer constellation that you have seen in the sky. If that is your turn, good sir, it is Slithery Snake's turn. The one on the left side of the big guy is going to slither on up to Chatwin (laughs) over against the wall and try and take a bite out of your ankle. That is a 17 to hit. Uh, yeah, that's it. Seven points of piercing damage. Mm-hmm. As it sinks in, and then I need you to make me a con save, please. All right. Is this in related to being poisoned? Yes. Okay, I'm going to roll with advantage then. Okay. Con save. That is going to be 19. That succeeds. Oh, thank God. <laughs> um, It automatically takes four points of fire damage, by the way, because it made a melee attack against me with my aura up. Okay. Uh, you say you take another seven points of poison damage. Chat one's looking real hurt, guys. <laughs> oh, I'm resistant against poison as well. Does that have any effect? So that would have it then to four. Okay, or great. Three. Still looking real hurt, but. <laughs> <laughs> and then you said it automatically takes four points of uh, four fire points. damage. Yeah. Yeah. And then it itself is looking hurt for making that move, but that is what it does for the time being. Uh, consequently, Rubo, this sneak then kind of slithers up to you and is going to attempt to do the same thing. No, thank you. That is a dirty 20 to hit. Yeah, that hit. And you take uh, one point of piercing damage as it bites into your ankle. And then I need you to make me a con save, please. That is a 19 on the die. So I'm assuming that's going to save. What is my con save? Plus two. 21. That saves. And you take, same as chat wins, seven points of poison damage as you feel the venom course through you. All right. Looking great, guys. And... That is the snake's turn as we move on to Damien. So Damien is going to go ahead and move up. He is going to position himself between the big giant and the the people because they decided to run into the room in front of me again. Except for Thalthu because he's smart about it. Thalthu, always the good kid. <laughs> yes, Thalthu is good kid. And he's going to be like, oh god damn it, I can't grab both of them. Or maybe I can I'm not going to do that. That would kill both of you, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> oh, God. Just get the big guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm super hurt. Yeah, I'm not looking great. I mean, I have spared the dying. Uh, how injured do they look? The one in front of Chatwin is hurting a little bit. The one in front of Rubo is completely unharmed. Or rather, latched on to them at this point. All right. Um, I'm going to try and grab the one that's by Rubo again. And throw it in front of me. Actually, I'm going to try and throw it. Can I try to throw... Is it bit, uh, small enough that I can try to throw it, throw it? How small do things need to be for you to throw them? How much does the damn thing weigh? <laughs> Some big snakes are pretty damn heavy and strong. It is a medium-sized creature. So oh, I would shit. say yeah. no. Okay, then I'm just going to push it out in front of me. That's a 17 plus 4 is a 21. Yeah. So I'm going to push... I'm going to throw this snake here and i'm gonna be like both of you get the fuck behind me how many times do i gotta say it he's gonna have his shield and draw his warhammer <laughs> one more thing as a bonus action everybody's gonna kind of see like this faint like blue aura go around him i'm gonna gain my uh my temporary hit points i'm gonna use defensive field as a an armor artificer Ooh. Ooh, fancy yeah, so what Defensive Field does, Defensive Field is, as a bonus action, I gain temporary hit points equal to the level in my class. So, I get four extra hit points. And I will take them, because <laughs> I might not be hurting as bad as you guys are, but I ain't necessarily topped off. And I can do that as many times as I have proficiency modifier. As, as Damien begins to glow like the rest of you. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. We move to the big guy's turn. Seeing that you kind of threw the snake in front of yourself, he's just going to kind of look down at it. And you hear this big, like, as it sort of roars. And then 
charges forward, barely avoiding stepping on the thing, and then takes a swing at you with the morning star, Damien. 15 to hit? That's not going to hit. And Damien's going to be like, bring it on, you sissy. I've had worse bar fights than this. It's going to frown at you and kind of roar out again as the morning star bounces off the shield. It looks angry that it could not get past your defenses. With that, we move to the top of the round. Rubo, it is once again your turn. Okay. You guys see Rubo's kind of standing there, pretty beaten up at this point. And he's like, fuck, this isn't looking good. Okay. And he kind of takes a second to, like, center himself. He closes his eyes. He's kind of looking down at his, like, kind of down at his feet area. And as he, like, opens his eyes, they're kind of, like, softly glowing. And you see out of his back, two metallic wings sprout out of his back. And he says, what the fuck? (laughs) Ruba, Ruba, Ruba. (laughs) You see that he, he kind of turns confused, like starts to spin for a second as one of the like metallic wings just slashes at one of the snakes and I'm going to make an attack. Make your attack. That is a 17 to hit. That hits. Fucking a lot of damage. It is 19 points of damage. As I just kind of like, what the fuck? I start spinning, trying to like look at my own wings behind my back. And they just kind of like slash through one of the snakes as it like goes to bite. And you watch as this metallic wing literally slices the thing in half. Hell yeah. It's gone. Which one did you just get? The one in front of you. Thank God. (laughs) Okay, perfect. I do that. And then I go, Chad, when you see this, right? Uh Uh-huh. Okay. Uh. Later, later. (laughs) I will move to the other side of... Damien on his left up towards this snake. Is the big guy and the snake in the same square now? Sort of, yes. The The big guy literally stepped over the snake. So yeah, they're in the same square. And as I step forward, I'll like you see the wings like almost acting on their own as the second one like slashes in on the big guy as my offhand attack. Alrighty, a little bit. Uh, that's a 15 plus. I don't know how this goes as we go. Uh, so 15 plus 4, 19. 19 hits. It does five points of damage. You see that the big guy is starting to look hurt as you slash across uh, his chest a little with the wing, and he's kind of huffing a bit. I just go, hey, Damien. I don't know what's up with this either. I don't think now is the time. Fair. Okay. (laughs) Now on my turn. And with that craziness, we move to Chatwin. Here's the thing. Am I able to angle a cone to keep, uh, at the very least, Rubo out of it? I can't angle Damien out of this, but I can try to angle Rubo out. Am I able to do that? I would say yes, if you put all of them at the edge of the cone. Okay. You could also, you don't have to attack and then move. You can move first. Oh, shit, you're right, because that one in front of me is dead. Mm Mm-hmm. I just didn't want to move further into the room, but because I can use a sorcery point to automatically have Damien succeed, but that's still half damage. I'm pretty hurt, so I was going to try to move out of the room, but if I just move over to my right about five feet, could I angle it to only hit big boy and then have enough and then I would have enough movement left to leave the room? Uh, chat one, chat one. I would need you to remember something. I am a sentinel. Things do not leave my threat range without me hitting them. And if I hit them, they don't get to move anymore. Good point. So I will go ahead and move. um, If I move right here, yeah. I'm going to move further into the room. Um, So I'm 15 feet away over to the, on the creature's uh, big boy's left-hand side. Um, Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, that would still hit. No, I'll just I'll just angle the cone so um, Big Boy is at the edge. 
Um, and -hmm. since he stepped over the snake, it should still hit the snake too, right? Yes, because they're in the same space. I'm going to do some real weird shit. Uh, (laughs) Okay. So, you guys see Chatwin is pretty beat up. And as I move a little bit further into the room, I get my hands up like I'm about to cast a spell again. But my spine straightens as if outside of my control. And in an effort to protect the vessel, something casts a spell other than what I had in mind. And you see a mass slowly begin to move up my chest and up the front of the throat. And then four fingers from the inside of my mouth grab onto the bottom of my jaw. And then another hand from the inside of my mouth grab onto the top of my jaw. And the two hands open up my mouth to a very unnaturally wide angle. And a sort of echoing screech that is not in my voice echoes out from inside of my own throat and fire comes shooting out of my throat. I need the snake and the creature to make deck saving throws. Fucking hell. (laughs) (laughs) I told y'all I'm gonna go hard on some of these descriptions. Okay, that's a... Uh, DC 14. Yeah, they both succeed. That's a 17 and a nat 20. Ugh, that's still half damage. But that is plus four, because I still have my aura up. So let me... Ooh, baby. If only that was full damage. So that is going to be... So that is 19 points of fire damage to both the snake and um, big boy. I'm sorry, can you repeat that number? 19. 19? Uh, yeah, the snake disintegrates <laughs> immediately as this long breath of fire flies out of your mouth and this screech erupts behind it. How much is big boy still kicking after that? He's looking rough, but oh. not horribly rough. After I cast that spell, um, the hands very quickly (laughs) and the lump in my throat disappears back down into my chest and it's a moment (coughs) (sighs) that's probably not a good development and I'm going to, (sighs) since that spell was a bonus action for me to cast I'm going to use my action to cast a cantrip Um, I'll just do a firebolt on big boy Alrighty. <gasps> that 20! <laughs> yeah! Oh my god, it, it rested on the edge for a second, about to roll over to a 2. <laughs> oh my god, that scared the shit out of me. <sighs> Alrighty. Uh, oh, this thing can and will wipe me from the face of this earth. <laughs> if it gets to me, I have no doubt about that. Um, okay, so that is going to be 2d10 plus 4. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing since that plus 4 is a special ability, that's not included in the double damage. No, because it's not rolled, I Yeah. So that is going to be an extra 20 points of fire damage um, after coughing my guts out. Just a very quick kind of like wipe the lip where I um, breathe that fire and flicking a little moat of fire at him. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. And you see that he, he is looking really hurt now, especially with the fire charring him, (laughs) but he he is still standing as Santhavet kind of like, chuckles in the back of your head and goes I don't think extra help is something that you should be worried about right now Chatwin. You weren't able to do that before. No I wasn't. But it's been a long time. (sighs) Okay. I'm gonna back up. Um, I'm terrified uh, not of this creature in front of me. (laughs) (laughs) And with that we go to Thelpu. So, obviously, I cast Ice Knife to uh, hit my entire 
team the um, the shards now. Yeah. Um, I'm going to. I'm the going only to natural solution. The only natural it's one. The author's turn to do some cool shit. I'm going to second level cast uh, guiding bolt again. All right. Hopefully kill it with that. But if not, I have a backup. So I'm gonna roll. It's an eleven. Eleven just hits. Oh, okay. That's um, that's the five d six radiant. Uh, and if this doesn't somehow kill it, I have one more thing. Get its ass! Oh, that's last. That's two sixes. So six, twelve. Twelve plus ten is twenty-two radiant damage as he knocks an arrow and arcs it over, over his friends and lands it into the beast. Floor is yours, good sir. What would you like to do? Yes, as he takes takes the arrow, uh, the luminous bow, cocks the arrow, materializes out of nothing. Aims for a second, thinks that, gets the memory that he probably has done this before, and releases the arrow, arcing it in its head, and he just whispers out, become stardust. (laughs) And as you whisper that uh, last phrase, you watch as, as the arrow goes clean through temple to temple. And the thing freezes and begins tipping over. You watch as it simply disintegrates, as you commanded, into stardust and sprinkles over the tree. Also, quick and quick question about the tree. Is the tree on fire? You see it is starting to slowly burn on a couple branches. Yeah. yeah I got that's... something for that now. Don't worry, guys. I learned how to put out <laughs> fires with my last level up. I realized that that's probably a useful thing. <laughs> but, yeah. Chat when the firefighter. Yeah. <laughs> we are out of initiative, as everything is dead. <coughs> 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 I'm going to use control flames to start putting out the fire on the tree, by the way. I start walking over towards Chatwin, just staring at her intently. These big-ass wings still on my back, and I'm like, you good? Mm -hmm. I'll stand up straight. I'm really fucking hurts. Um, I'm going to go grab that snake. I'm going to walk over to the snake that he cut in half and um, try to take a sample of some of its venom. Hang, hang on a quick second. You see he like twirls a dagger in his hand and you see him like slice down the palm of his hand and he starts to like kind of like rub his hand against you and you you start to feel uh, some healing effects from it. Um, using my, what is it called again? Sorry, divine blood, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. So I take damage and then I can roll my sneak attack no. to heal you. Oh shit. Are you just rubbing blood uh, on my forehead? Yeah, pretty much. No, uh, I don't know if it's on your forehead, but I try not uh, to I vomit take at three your, points at of damage. It's a D eight, yeah. and then I heal you for uh, five and four is nine points of healing. Thank you. I definitely I understand that you're healing me, but I try very hard not to vomit at the feeling of your skin touching mine. Thanks, uh, Rubo. Um, I'm going to go pick up that snake. Um, totally ignoring <laughs> everything else. <laughs> and as you walk over to the snake, uh, I'll have you make a check in a second, but you okay. hear like a, a whisper in the back of your head that goes, <clears throat> that is interesting. <clears throat> Stop. You may want a sample of that for later. Stop. Why should I? Stop. You don't... You you need to take a break. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And the voice fades into the back of your head as... um, (laughs) Roll me a medicine check to collect the sample. Yeah. Come on, baby. Um, Does the author actually come into the room now? He's going to. I'm just going to... You, you walk in and you just see giant metal wings on Yeah, I, I do want to come on my back, that, but I don't want to interrupt. <laughs> uh, that's going to be uh, 15 total. It takes a minute, especially now that the snake is not living to sort of yeah. help with the sample. My hands but are too you shaky. manage to. <laughs> mm-hmm. That and your shaking hands don't help, but you do manage to collect a semi decent sample. At least this one isn't mostly blood, yeah. But yeah, you have some snake venom. 
Felthu, anything you're doing as you walk into yeah, the room? Yeah, he's going to walk into the room and just see the m- metallic wings, right? They're metal. Yeah, they're metallic. He's going to step in the room, survey the, the stardust pile and the corpses, and just look to you, Ruben, and say, that doesn't seem natural. Gesturing to the wings. They kind of, like, stretch out a little bit, and he's like, uh, they don't feel natural either, to be honest. Um, and you see, he kind of like whips them around for a second. They're just kind of like, kind of like whipping back and forth. And then you see like one of the feathers launch out and like slam into the wall. <laughs> and I go, what the fuck? Hmm, that's very strange. And I just want to point out, he's saying this while holding a glowing bow and glowing. And of course, his luminous limbs. Um, have you not done that before? No. Never. Hmm. Well, I suppose we can... There are questions to ask later. Then. Yeah, there's a lot of things we can talk about once we make sure there's no more of those things. Do you guys think I just have these forever? Lad. Not if you... They're kind of big. I don't know how I would sleep with them. And, like, as I'm saying that, they start, they, like, slowly fade away. <laughs> that fixes oh, that problem. Okay. Wait, I think it's been about a, about a minute of, of us all kind of taking the blood mm-hmm. and talking for a second, right? Yeah. Mm. Fade my how, or, like, do they go gone. back in? I don't, I, I think, I don't know, maybe I'm not facing you, so you don't really see it happen. Yeah. I'm just curious. And I can't see my back. Yeah. I'm kneeling on the ground, collecting the venom, washing my hands. I've washed them about three or four times already, and I'm still going. Uh, Damien, what are you up to? Damien is looking, is going to like look around the area for any more threats and try to look at the area where the guy just went poof from, because that never happens. Is he a pile of glitter now? <laughs> oh my he's god! Oh my god! <laughs> Yeah, so you look around, everything seems pretty clear from what you can see. You don't see any more threats anywhere. As you survey the area where the corpse that is now Stardust once was, you do see kind of like a faint remnants of twinkling, like where some of the Stardust may have fallen right there without scattering onto the tree. He's going to pick up a small handful of it put it, and just kind of like put it in a little pouch. Um, he's also going to look at the area where the other person disappeared from before the fight started. You survey that area a little bit and... Do I need to make investigation? Uh, make me... Yeah. I was about to say perception. Uh, I'd love to do a perception check. Even if I only roll an 8, but that's a 14. Alright. Um, you just start looking around and... You do see some, like, hastily drawn runes on the floor in chalk, but parts of them have been rubbed out now that this scuffle took place. There's blood on top of, like, a side of, like, the circle. He's gonna be like, Chatwin, do you know what this is? Head down, washing hands. I'm on number six. I I can wait. Rubo comes over to take a look at it. Can I try to, like... Make some sort of check to see if I know what it, what's up with it. Uh, I would say history check. So it's a 17. You start to look. Uh, there's not much there with the runes. Uh, with the, the majority of it being like either wiped away or covered in blood. But um, from what little you can see, this is definitely some sort of like... You can tell that this is definitely something that would have taken a bit of time. Like, to set up. Uh, you've seen, like, some ritual spells before that some of your friends have set up for various reasons in some of the organizations you've been a part of. And uh, while they didn't necessarily use the same exact runes, they have a very similar process. And they they take quite a bit of time to set up before they can cast. Okay. I think I look at it and I'm like, I don't know, chat with <laughs> Uh, after I finish washing my hands for the eighth time, I kind of stop and stare at them for a really long time, making sure I got every single inch and crevice. 
And then I'm going to put my gloves back on. <clears throat> um, sorry, what are we doing? Uh, I'll get up and go over and join them. Um, I will go ahead. Um, I'm going to take a look at the runes and try to do my own sort of investigation, history check, whatever you need. Um, see if history it's... or arcana. History or arcana, okay. Um, I mean, hmm. both are equal. Um, 16 plus 6, 22. Yeah, with a 22, um, you remember some of the studying that you did, and while you never really applied a lot of it, since magic always came naturally to you, you remember very clearly having a lesson with one of your tutors on teleportation and recognizing some of the symbols from various, like, um, teleportation magics that people will use to travel from one place to another, usually where they've been able to set up rune similar runes previously. So, from what I'm seeing here, it suggests that they were teleported back to, like, a pre-designated area. It's like it could... It has the possibility of being a very far distance. It's not your average, like, misty step or something. They're not just, like, outside the building. No, it would not be somewhere as... It could be, you know, for some of these spells, it could be anywhere. Yeah. I know there's no way to tell, like, just by looking at the runes, the distance they went, but the nature of what I'm seeing suggests that it has the possibility of being, like, miles from here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I'll go ahead and uh, explain that um, to uh, the others, uh, the boys in the room with me. So... This was uh, something uh, premeditated, possibly. Um, the one in charge, the brains behind the operation, uh, probably has more plans if they were running away. This was not their final destination. This was not their ultimate goal here. It was likely just to stop along the way. Not a good way of knowing exactly, though. Um, uh, that's all I have for you, though. I'm sorry. Um, everybody make me a quick perception check, please. Oh, Boy. great. I'm so good at that. I'm, I am good at those. <laughs> I'm not. I'm really not. Oh, God. No one's perceiving. Uh, 13 total. So bad. 13. I have a 21. That is a 2 plus a 1. Good old save for Rubo. Rubo's still trying to, like, s spin around like a dog, looking like it going for their tail, like trying to see the 25. <laughs> Where the fuck did they go? Nice. Uh, so, wait, who said? Who else said they got above a twenty? I did. Okay. Twenty-one. And then uh, sixteen plus five. Chat one, what'd you get? Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. So, it would really just be Thelthu and Damien, as you guys are kind of lingering after the effects of this this battle that you still kind of don't know what to do with. You start to hear the faint sound of music. Like this. Uh, like this weird floating ethereal tune. Coming from the direction of the forest. I'm gonna look at the others and notice that nobody but Thealthu is hearing it. And he's like, am I crazy or can y'all not hear that? Well, I think it may have come from that noise you someone created outside. It Hear what? disturbed the forest, and now it's singing to us. Hmm? The forest what? can sing to you? Well, I mean, music. I, it, it's performing, I suppose I should have said. That's right. I don't That's know. pretty cool. As Damien still has this little, like, light blue glow around him. After the things I've seen today, anything can happen. I would agree. Well, shall we go take a look? If at all possible, um, I don't know about you all, but I'm not uh, doing too well. Um, I'm absolutely willing to go and uh, begin to follow it, but if we can avoid going into another dangerous situation before we get the chance to rest and heal up, um, that would be preferable. If you need it, are, are you okay, Chatwin? You looked really... Off put after your last magic display. <laughs> uh. <clears throat> uh, 
no, it's uh, <laughs> still lying to them, are we? <laughs> <coughs> Stop. <laughs> um, sorry, Good. I'm fine. I'm just a little. No offense, Chatwin, but my wings were not the weirdest thing to happen. I, it's 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 fine. It's it, you don't have to wor worry about me. I I'm just. My magic is just, you know, like, uh, Theotho, your magic is all blowy and glittery stars. Mine is just a little bit strange, and that's fine. Um, nothing more to it. <clears throat> uh, I mean, I would not disagree. It is a little unnerving at times, but you're still you. <laughs> You know, if if you need help with something, you just gotta let us know. It's fine. <laughs> I, uh, I'm just, you know, out gallivanting the world, and some things that I encounter are a bit unexpected, but that's part of learning and growing, isn't it? I suppose so. <sighs> so, um, yeah, if we are able to uh, avoid a bit of uh, combat. I don't know if that's um, what you're hearing, Thilthu, is going to uh, persist. I don't want to miss an opportunity for investigation by uh, stopping for us. I'm, uh, Rubo, you were very helpful in getting me um, a, a little bit back up to strength. Um, so I'm okay. I'm just not doing too, too well. You know? Alright. Well, it sounds like someone's playing music out there. And if we do want to go out there, I'm going to ask that you stand the fuck behind me, alright? And I mean that in every possible sense. Do not get yourself in danger. I can take quite a beating. I'm, I'm fine with that. I, some of my spells, um, they have the danger of hitting other people. I was doing my best to avoid hitting... Um, you all, who I know, are um, on my side. Uh, I, the snakes just moved a little bit faster than expected. <laughs> I thought I could get out of the way in time. If you, if you have to choose between hitting one of hitting me or letting them get close to you, you're gonna choose to hit me. I can, I can try to angle it a bit more. Um, it takes a bit of strength, but I can angle it a bit so it. it it avoids you uh, a, a bit, not completely, but uh, you know, it, it won't hurt you as much if that's the situation, but it's fine. I think I, I, I kind of walk over to Chatwin and I say, okay, I got one more trick up my sleeves, like rub my hands together and then uh, you see them start to glow a little bit and I just like place my hands on both your shoulders and I'll use my healing hands. I sigh a little bit in relief trying to hide it because you're not touching me with your bare hands again. <laughs> but I'll, I'll, I'll give you four more hit points. Okay. Hearing the music grow louder in his ears, the Thalthu is going to... Uh, before going for the door, he's going to... If it hasn't been ten minutes, he's going to just put the luminous bow on a, a branch if there's one of the tree to hang it up to end, to end that effect. And then he's just going to go for the door not not necessarily saying anything to anyone oh we're going <laughs> I, I mean we noticed filthy walking out I'm guessing I think it'd be yes. hard not to okay oh okay <laughs> he is not being subtle at all okay we're going filthy we're coming <laughs> can I can I hear them or no <laughs> You would not be able to hear Chatwin at this point. The music is so loud and incessant in your ears that you had felt it calling to you like very gently before, but now it's like a get the fuck over here kind mm -hmm. of like incessant. Damn. The gods are really like fucking move, bitch. <laughs> we, we pissed off the forest. God damn. Okay, don't feel we're coming. I'll uh, give Rubo an appreciative pat on the shoulder for the um, extra bit of healing and uh, uh, go after Thalthu. Okay, we're moving. We're moving. Uh, we're going. All right. And you guys follow Thalthu down the stairs and out the front 
of the the building. Oh, shit. And Monks, back. it's safe to come out before we leave. <laughs> <laughs> you can come out. Zombies are gone. There's two rooms upstairs we haven't checked. Good luck. <laughs> and you hear a faint, thanks. <laughs> as, as you start running off, you guys dip into the forest and see Thelthu just kind of continue walking and walking until the brush gets thicker and thicker and you're going in a direction that you don't recognize and even those who didn't hear the music before it starts to build in your ears and become louder until you see a light in the distance as the sun is now setting in the sky and the already yellow like pinkish yellow glow of the sun gives way to this bright golden light that's shining and that light goes from a small circle and grows bigger and bigger and suddenly there's a figure in front of you rose would you like to describe your character please you all see a six foot tall elven warrior with a long sword and a short sword on his side, with basically long blonde hair, green eyes, and a bag pretty much on his back. And he's just going to see all of you be a little surprised and go, Oh, you must be the. And his words trail off as he sees the condition and what you all are. The the people I'm looking for. And that's where we're going to leave it for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. No! <laughs> I so am the music. What keep playing? <laughs> <laughs> can I add one? Can I add one last moment of that's not related to her character? Sure. I think as we're kind of walking, uh, I'm probably like I think Thealthu is in the front and Chatwin's trailing behind him, um, and I kind of like Damien. You feel like Rubo's arm like up against you, and uh, you kind of see that he's like per- bleeding pretty heavily still. Because he pumped all his healing into chat one, and he he's at like nine hit. Points. Oh shit! <laughs> Jeez. So he kind of like he kind of like he puts his arm around you, and he's like he's like a oh, little help, buddy. No, Damien will straight up carry you. <laughs> you motherfucker! <laughs> if I knew you were that low. But I think I think Damien's the only one that kind of notices the like. I think like, I do have a very like, high passive perception. Yeah, I think Rubo tried to do a good job of like hiding his his hurt in front of everybody. Uh, but as they're kind of going, like, Damien sees him, like, straight up hurting to walk. Oh, that makes me really sad. <laughs> I, I was debating asking everyone needed healing, but I was like, what if it is combat and I want more spells? <laughs> but, but what if we want to fuck up some enemies? <laughs> Emma, I want to keep playing. That's fine. Like, da- I like da- I Damien, I Damien will eventually go into Cleric, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Everyone take a level in cleric. I, I have a good amount of healing. I just pumped all mm. my healing pretty much into to everybody else. Yeah. So I mean, could use it on myself. We'll see at the rate that everything's going. But thank you all so much for listening to our crazy session tonight. Um, if you enjoyed it, please go follow us on social media. We are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok as Chronicles of Kriath Pod. All one word, all lowercase. And... Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Yeah. Bye. Bye. See you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> ah! I'm. <laughs> no. Who's no! that? <laughs> <laughs>